Okay, so we're going to draw a table here. We're going to look at the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, and quaternary structure of proteins. What they are and how they're significant to proteins. Remember, proteins do shit. They are the doing molecules, and their shape is totally important to their function. So this is really essential. And this is they ask over and over again throughout the two years. Primary structure. Now, we can represent primary structure with this little symbol there, one, and then the little circle after it, superscript. Okay, so what is the primary structure of a protein? It is the sequence of amino acids. So how am I gonna draw that as a, as a drawing? Well, if a different shape represents a different amino acid, that is gonna be continuing, we've got a, maybe a, a triangle, maybe a circle, maybe a square, maybe there's two squares, maybe it might be glycine, glycine, something like that. Could maybe do an upside down triangle, maybe another circle, etc. Now, okay, these, these molecules, if we remember our amino acid from before, we've got a different R group, that's the only thing that's different, and that different R group will have slightly different charges, like delta charges. Remember from water, we've got delta negative, delta positive, it just means a little bit. And so these are the same. So that if they're both positive there, they're both gonna have the same charges. Uh, this one might have also a, a positive down here. This one, we've got the same as this, it's gotta be the same as our other one. Okay, so this is gonna affect how the protein folds up. A little bit like magnetic tape, like old school tape deck tape. If you get it out of the cassette, it winds up into a ball and that's all static charges. So very similar. Now we also want to know what bonds are in it. Well, the bonds between each of these amino acids are peptide bonds. Very classic questions, these ones coming up. This is gonna be the secondary structure. Okay, so this is, we've now got our primary structure. This is gonna fold up and some of those folding regions are gonna be very common to all proteins. They're repeated sections. So the long chains of amino acids fold into regions with repeating patterns. Now there's two categories of these repeated patterns that you need to know about. One is the alpha helix or alpha helices, alpha helix, and I'm gonna draw a helix like that. And the other are beta pleated sheets. And when I get around to drawing them, they're gonna look like this. So obviously we could write alpha. That's a horrible alpha, not a very good alpha, I'm afraid. And that's beta. So I'm gonna draw our regular sections of our protein as black. So we've got kind of no, no pattern, squirrely black amino acid chain. And then we're gonna hit a region. Let's say we're gonna do some beta pleated sheets. So that region there folds into beta pleated sheets, and that's just a region within the protein. And then we've got some more random squirrely squirrel stuff, and then we have a region that might be an alpha helix. I mean, this could continue. Let's just do some up here, and maybe have another alpha helix, something like that. So these are regions within the protein. What bonds are there forming these? Well, we've got the peptide bonds because this is all the primary structure that's making this up. So we've got peptide bonds. And the bonds that hold these together are hydrogen bonds. Okay, tertiary structure. How can we define that? Well, it's the final 3D resting shape of the polypeptide chain or the protein. So I'm gonna represent that in red, yeah? So the final shape might be an enzyme. We're gonna, maybe I'll keep my penis active site. And that's gonna be the, so that is the resting shape. And then within that, I'm actually gonna draw the, these regions first because we're gonna have our, beat, our secondary structure, the regions within it, and then all of this space is gonna be made up by the non, regular repeating regions of the polypeptide chain. So what bonds have we got? Well, we've got the primary structure, so we've got peptide bonds. We've got the secondary structure, so we've got hydrogen bonds. We've also got holding these into position, we've got stronger bits and stronger bonds, which might, let's say, hold that bit to this bit, 
we might have a bond holding this bit to this bit. Maybe this bit's bonded here, maybe this bit's bonded here. So these bonds are proper bonds. We call them, we've got ionic bonds and we've got what's called disulfide bridges. So they bridge, they connect two different regions and they hold them solidly together. The last one we have is the quaternary structure. What is a quaternary structure? Well, it's the definition of a quaternary protein is proteins that are made up from more than one polypeptide chain. An example of that is hemoglobin. We've got collagen and other things as well, but this is the most common one that you come across, hemoglobin. So we've got four polypeptide chains in, in hemoglobin. So I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna break away from my color system for all of these. I'm just gonna use now one color for each polypeptide chain. Within each of these, there will be B alpha helices and beta pleated sheets, but I'm not using the same color system. So this is, um, maybe if you have more colors, you could keep green and blue and do bits like that, but I'm just gonna draw, that's gonna be one polypeptide chain and they kind of interlock a little bit. A small bit of overlap. Hemoglobin is actually a globular protein. It's roughly round or spherical. The heme, the iron group, actually goes right in. Oh, well, it's, you don't need to know. Let's let's not get off topic. Okay, so within this polypeptide chain, there would be alpha helices and beta pleated sheets, and the same would apply to all of those. And what bonds in there? Well, it's basically exactly the same. It's just a slightly more complicated version of the tertiary structure. So we have peptide bonds again. Cover these up, see if you can remember it. If you can drill this into your brain whilst you're doing it, it's more effort now, it takes a bit longer now, but when you come to revise, you find that the information is in your head and not you don't have to relearn it. Hydrogen bonds. We also have ionic bonds, which are holding all this thing together. And we have disulfide bridges. Now they ask questions about this all of the time. So make sure that you can summarize this information in five minutes or less.